Welcome, welcome to the Gospel of the Word broadcast. Happy Sabbath, my family. Happy Sabbath. And Sabbath. we're happy to be with you again on the Gospel of the Word broadcast each and every Sabbath day at 4.30. Uh, with, uh, my name is Brother Salome, and with me is my sister in Christ and my beautiful wife, Sister Monique. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, family. Uh, we're excited. This, uh, to be before you today to bring forth the word of God and study God's word. Uh, today's topic is called Remember Mercy, O Lord. And the reason why I wanted to bring this message is because it's important that we realize and study the mercy of the Lord because it's, it's for all times of year. Amen. You know, from we as we go through the, the feast seasons that are coming up, we have Passover, we go to uh, Pentecost, then we go to the Day of Atonement. It's so important that we remember uh, the Lord's mercy during the feast days. But what are you supposed to do when, when you're not dealing with the feast days? The Lord's mercy is still there for us because we fall short every day. So it's so important that we remember the mercy of the Lord and how to go before our God to receive this mercy. So uh, with that being said, we also have the super producer, Kaleem, in the background doing what he does which was a which is a great job uh we're going to start off with the definition of mercy brother clean can you put up the definition of mercy and the definition of mercy is compassionate forbearance or forgiveness toward an offender or enemy and it's important and this is according to dictionary.com as you can see so we want to first establish that in your mind and let it settle and sink in that our Lord is very compassionate to us and forgives us because we are offenders of him. As it says in Isaiah 64, and we're not going to read it, but you can go to 60, Isaiah 64, it says, our righteousness is as filthy rags. So it's important for us to recognize that we fall short every day and that we have a righteous God and we're going to read that. Uh, constantly throughout this message that we can go before our God and ask for forgiveness. So again, mercy is compassionate forbearance or forgiveness toward an offender or an enemy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And with that being said, let's talk about the mercy of the Lord. And let's start off in Lamentations, the third chapter. Lamentations, the third chapter. I'm sorry. Uh, we didn't we didn't do the opening psalms. I'm sorry. Forgive me, Brother Clean. Uh, Psalm 21 is what uh, I think my sister is going to read. Um, Psalm 121. 121, yeah. I'm sorry. Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Yes. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Yes. And that was Psalm 121, verses 1 through 8. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And that just that uh opening psalm just sends a chill uh, chill up my spine because uh it's uh one of the verses that my father had me memorize when back in the day when I was a young shorty. So I just thank God for that that verse uh, that my my dear sister read for us. Um, and we just want to go forth before the Lord in a spirit of grace uh, as we go into His Holy Word. Let's turn with me, family, to Lamentations, the third chapter. Lamentations, the third chapter. And we will read verses. My dear sister will read for us verses 21 through 26. And when you have it, please read for us. Sister. And this is Jeremiah. The setting is Jeremiah uh, uh, lamenting Israel's condition, specifically the children of Judah. By then, the children of Israel, the other 10 tribes were already taken out. And he's dealing with the children of Judah going through their circumstance of being under the Babylonian captivity. But the specifics of this verse is what I want you to hone in on, family. Uh, 
and we want to we want to touch on the mercy of the Lord is what I want you to focus on. All right, uh, my dear sister Monique, would you please pick it up, verse twenty one, please? Yes. This I recall to my mind. Yes. Therefore, have I hope. Yes. It is of the Lord's mercy. It is of the Lord's mercies. Come on, read. That we are not consumed. Yes, because that's the reason why we're not consumed, family. If it's not for the Lord's mercies or his compassion, or forbearance or forgiveness, that's the reason why we're not consumed today, family, because we sin against God every day. Yeah. Can you pick it up in verse 22 again? It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Yes. Because his compassions fail not. His compassions fail not, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, read. They are new every morning. They are new every morning because the Lord don't change. His mercy is renewed every morning. Continue reading, please. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is the Lord's faithfulness, right? Continue reading. The Lord is my portion, mm -hmm. saith my soul. Yes. Therefore will I hope in him. Mm -hmm. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. So the Lord is good to them that wait for him. You got to uh, receive that forgiveness, family. Amen. Wait on God, right? Continue reading, please. It is good that a man should both hope wait for the salvation of the Lord. So who's the salvation of the Lord I want? That's Jesus, right? Man, that's cool. Praise the Lord. So it's a good it's a good thing that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord, right? Wait on your God to come through for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's now move on to Exodus the 34th chapter, please. And we're just reading about how merciful our God is, the God that we serve in spirit and in truth. Exodus 34, and we're going to read about Moses and the in his inter interaction with the Lord. Exodus 34, I like to come here to show God's characteristics and how God is. Because God wants us to be like he is, right? Right? So if he has the fruit of the Spirit and he exhibits the fruit of the Spirit, guess what he wants us to walk in? He wants us to walk in the fruit of the Spirit as well, right? And Paul breaks all this down in Galatians, the fifth chapter, right? Let's read, let's pick it up in verses one and two, and we shall skip down to verse five, please. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm -hmm. hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first. Because Moses was so bold that he went ahead and broke the first two tables, which were the Ten Commandments. And he had to go and hew two more tables of stone so the Lord could write on them the Ten Commandments again. That's how bold Moses was. But God was merciful. He was. Because he could kill Moses for doing something uh, so bold, you know, as breaking God's commandments. Uh, literally, he broke the two tables of stone. But can you pick it up verse, at verse one again, please? And the Lord said unto Moses, Yes. Hew thee two tables of stone mm -hmm. like unto the first. Mm -hmm. And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. Which he breaketh. But see, God had a work for Moses to do. The children of Israel had to be delivered to the promised land. And Moses at least took them to the border and Joshua took them in. But God had, them, had a work for Moses to do for those 40 years. Right? Praise the Lord. Continue reading, please. And be ready in the morning yes. and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai mm -hmm. and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. Skip down to verse five, please. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there mm -hmm. and proclaimed the name of the Lord. So he proclaimed the name of the Lord, right? So the Lord proclaimed the name of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. That's power right there. Continue reading. And the Lord passed by before him yes. and proclaimed mm -hmm. the Lord. The Lord God. What is he? Merciful. Yes. And gracious. Yes. Long suffering mm -hmm. and abundant in goodness and truth. So this is the God we serve, family. He's merciful Amen. and gracious. Long suffering, meaning he's patient with us, family, and abundant in goodness and truth. This is the God we serve. Come on, read, please. Keeping mercy for thousands. How long? For thousands. He said, keep in mercy for, for thousands. thousands.
continue reading. Forgiving iniquity yes. and transgression mm -hmm. and sin. Mm -hmm. And that will by no means clear the guilty. Right? So if you're guilty and you don't ask for forgiveness, you will be guilty. But mercy goes on to those who ask for forgiveness. Right? Amen. Because he forgives iniquity and transgression and sin. Continue reading. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children mm -hmm. and upon the children's tr children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Yes. And that is also written in the Ten Commandments. And you can read it on your own, Exodus 21 through 6, where he says he shows mercy unto the thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. Right. We're not going to read that today, but we're going to move on to Psalms 103. For time's sake. Psalms 103. We just want to identify the merciful uh, characteristics of God. I like to call Psalm 103 the mercy of God chapter. We're not going to read the whole thing. You can read the whole thing on your own. It's a beautiful passage of scripture that encourages you about the goodness of our God. We were just listening to uh, C.C. Wine. Shout out to her in the goodness of God. And that song rang forth the mercy of God as well, family. Amen. You know, add that to your playlist. It's on mine. So they keep you encouraged, family, in this walk. All right. Uh, let's pick it up at verse uh, um, one, and we shall read one through four, and then we sh shall skip to eight. When you have it, please read, my dear sister. Bless the Lord, yes. O my soul, mm -hmm. and all that is within me. Mm -hmm. Bless his holy name. Yes, ma'am. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So, so we're not to forget all the lord's benefits towards us right didn't he wake us up didn't we read that his mercy uh is every morning Amen. right that's the benefit of the lord to what that he woke you up that's a part of his mercy that he allowed you to sleep and wake back up and work on a job that's a part of his benefit package as i've heard some people say yes. continue reading verse three who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Did he does what? Forgiveth all thine iniquities. All thy iniquities, the Lord will forgive you if you go to him humbly and humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt thee or lift you up in due time, right? Amen. Come on, read my sister. Who healeth all thy diseases. Yes, ma'am. How many diseases does he heal? All thy diseases. All. This is wonderful. I, I, I'm, I'm here to, I'm standing before you today as someone who has been healed by the Lord. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. He healed me of my diseases. All right. And if he healed me, he definitely can heal you. I'm because I'm not Amen. supposed to be here today, standing before you today, witnessing the gospel of the Lord before you today. But he has me here for a reason, just like he had Moses there for a reason Praise who the Lord. fell short. Praise the Lord. Right. Continue reading, my dear sister, verse 4. Who redeemeth thy life. Hold on. He does what to he thy life? Redeemeth. And we're going to read uh, later on the definition of redemption, but not now. But who redeemeth thy life. Come on, read. From destruction. Yes. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. These are the characteristics of our God. He has a redeeming power to save. Amen. Because it says he redeemed thy life from destruction. We are supposed to die. The second death, matter of fact. But, our, well, well, we'll just read it a little later. Continue reading. Verse, uh, can you read verse four again, please? Who redeemeth thy life from mm -hmm. destruction. Yes. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. With, he crowneth thee. He sits a crown of tender mercies upon your head we're going to touch on this a little later but keep that in mind uh highlight it underline it whatever you have to do just keep it in your mind that he crowned you family with love and kindness and tender mercies continue reading please skip down to i'm sorry i'm into it verse eight the Lord is merciful. The Lord is what? Merciful. Come on, read. And gracious. Mm -hmm. Slow to anger. Yes. And plenteous in mercy. Mm -hmm. He will not always chide. Plenteous in mercy, family. He's plenteous in mercy. He's full of it. So full of it that he's willing to give it to us. All we have to do is ask. Ain't that beautiful? Amen. Praise the Lord. Continue reading. 
He will not always chide. Mm -hmm. Neither will he keep his anger forever. So he will not always be angry. Neither will he keep his anger forever. So all God does get in because we fall short every day. But continue reading. He has not dealt with us after our sin. No, he has not. Because we fall short every day. We're supposed to die. The wages of sin is death. Read Romans 6 and 23. The wages of sin is death. Continue reading. Nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Yes. For as the heaven is high above the earth. Yes. So great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As high as the heaven is above the earth, which is super high. There's three heavens according to uh, uh, Corinthians, right? Right. Man hasn't been able to even reach heaven, right? We're in a spaceship where God is. Can't find him. He's trying. He said, for as heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. If you fear God, he will be merciful to you, family. And we're going to read what this fear is. Continue reading. Verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far have he removed our transgressions from us. Can you measure how far the east is from the west? Huh? Can we measure it? I always think of we when I think of east and west so I can keep up with the directions. That's how I keep up with which direction is east and west. So you got north up top, south down at the bottom. W is W is west and then east is west. East is east. But it's far apart, family, is my point. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So far has he removed our transgressions from us because that's the mercy of the Lord yeah. that we have to remember at all times. We're supposed to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That's what we're doing today. But we also have to remember his mercy. Lord. That's what he's commanding us to do. Skip down to verse 17, please. 17. Yes, ma'am. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon yes. them that fear him. It's from everlasting. The mercy is from everlasting or forever to forever upon them that fear him. And do what? And his righteousness unto children's children. So he pours his right, not our right. Did it say our righteousness? His righteousness. His righteousness unto children's children. That's how good God is, family. That it pours upon all of us. That's a part of this grace. This great song is out here like grace and mercy. You understand what I'm saying? Family? Verse 18, please. To such as keep his covenant. To what? Such as keep his covenant. What covenant? You mean the one that Moses broke? Come on, read. And to those that remember his commandments to do them. To do what to them? To do them. To do them. Because that's according to Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. It says the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. Right? Amen. All right. But let's move on now to how even though God is God is super merciful, but you got to confess. Uh, you, and be a repentant sinner. You could be a, a repentant sinner. And then God will be merciful to you as well. Mm -hmm. Let's see Luke 18, please. Luke 18. Mm -hmm. All right. Praise the Lord. We're not trying to keep you long, my brothers and sisters. We just want to uh, touch on some high points and um, have you enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Praise God. Um, but we have to touch on this remembering mercy, O oh Lord, uh, to bless the people. Uh, we're going to touch uh, on Luke, the eighth chapter. We're going to pick it up for verse one and skip down to verse nine, please. Luke 18. Yes, ma'am. Luke 18. Sorry about that. Verse uh, one. When you're ready, please read my dear sister. Verse one. Yes, ma'am. And he spake a parable. And Talking about Jesus. Jesus is speaking a parable. Come on, read. Unto them to this end, mm -hmm. that men ought always to pray yes. and not to faint. That's a good idea, family, when you're in this walk, to always pray. And not to faint. It's, uh, skip down to verse 9, please. Let's verse read about this parable. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. Yes, ma'am. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. That did what? Trusted in themselves. And what happened? That they were righteous. That they were righteous. How many people do we know think they are righteous? 
instead of depending on the righteousness of the Lord. That's called getting it twisted, getting these scriptures twisted. Because our righteousness is filthy rags. And they think that they are righteous, self-righteous. Righteous over much is a, a scripture in Ecclesiastes that comes to mind. But continue in verse 9 again, please. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. And did what the others? Despised others. You mean all men aren't created equal? They despise others? That we're not equal in this walk? You to look down on other people because they don't look like you? Is that Bible or what? Continue reading, my dear sister. Verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. Mm -hmm. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Uh-oh. So now you got a Pharisee and the other is a publican. So you got a religious man and the other is not so much. A publican. Continue reading, please. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee mm -hmm. that I am not as other men are, mm. extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Wow. So this, this is the self-righteous attitude that we must not have, fam. Mm. We cannot walk around saying that this person, because they celebrate that way, I don't want to be like them. I'm righteous. I keep God's commandments, so I'm better than them. No. Once upon a time, you was in that too. We have to remember the mercy of the Lord Amen. because he received, we received his word and God allowed us to change, right? And gave us mercy enough to change our lives, God. right? Verse 12, please. I fast twice in the week. Yes. I give tithes of all that I possess. Mm, he gives twice as much tithes, right? I fast twice in the week and I give tithes of all that I possess. I'm a tithe paying, fast twice a week believer. In God. What, what did the publican have to say, though? Verse 13. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, mm -hmm. but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. What? Be merciful to me, a sinner? So this is about humbling yourself Man. before the mighty hand of God? And he'll lift you up. Amen. So if you confess your sin as a repentant sinner, let's see what happens. Verse 14, please. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Mm -hmm. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased. Yes. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. If you humble yourself, family, and recognize the mercy of the Lord, Amen. you shall be exalted. Did the Pharisee say anything about the mercy of the Lord? Take note of that, family. If they're not talking about the mercy of the Lord, run. All right? Because of God, we got a forgiving God. Let's move on to the famous Psalm 51. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 51. It's hitting some high points about the mercy of the Lord. And we're, we're going to touch on, this is the Psalm of David and how he fell short of God's word, you know, where he uh, killed Uriah the Hittite and took Bathsheba, right? He set him up after he got caught. But after he committed that uh, heinous act, there was a child uh, established out of that union. And God decided to uh, take that child's life. Anybody spared David in that act, right? Mm -hmm. But let's read about what David has to say on that note. Because Nathan came to him and said, gave him a parable about a man who took something that was not his. David got upset, and then Nathan revealed to him that he was that man. And 
he was shocked that he was the man that the Lord was talking about, right? But he humbled himself. And let's see the humility of David, just like the publican that we just read about in Jesus' parable. All right? Psalm 51, 1 through 4, and then we skip down to 6. When you're ready, please read for our family, please. Have mercy upon me, O God, mm. according to thy loving kindness. So his first two words is, have mercy. My grandmother used to say it like this, have mercy. Have mercy. Not with the V-E on the end of have. Have mercy on me, Lord. All right, we from Charleston, so we a little geechy sometimes. All right, let's pick it up at verse one again, please. Have mercy upon me, mm -hmm. O God, yeah. according to thy loving kindness, yeah. according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, mm -hmm. blot out my transgressions. Blot out my transgressions, please. Don't, don't show my transgressions no more in your book. Blot it out, Lord. Continue reading. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity mm -hmm. and cleanse me from my sin. Yes. For I acknowledge my transgressions. Yes, and you my have to. You have to acknowledge your transgression. If you want God to receive you, you have to humble yourself and confess your sins. Come on, read. And my sin is ever before me. Yes, it is. Against thee, thee mm -hmm. only, have I sinned mm -hmm. and done this evil in thy sight. Yes. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Yes. Skip down to verse 6, please. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, mm -hmm. and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Yes. Purge me with hyssop. Or clean me with hyssop. Come on, read. And I shall be clean. Yes. Wash me, and mm -hmm. I shall be whiter than snow. Amen. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Yes. Hide thy face from my sins. Uh-oh. So we're talking about this mercy again that we read about in Psalms 103, right? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord that as the east is far, as far as the west, we want you to hide your, our sins from us. Continue reading verse 9. And blot out all mine iniquities. How many? All. So we don't want to leave any sin behind. Please forgive me for all my sins, Lord. Come on, read. Create in me a clean heart, yes. O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Amen. So renew means he had a right spirit before, right? He lost it and got it back. Or he's asking for it back, right? Continue reading verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence. Yes. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. He's begging to not lose the Holy Spirit of the Lord. Right? So this is a, he's a believer. Amen. Right? Those who have the Holy Spirit uh, believes in Jesus Christ and have the Holy Spirit that he sent, we can fall short at any time. But we have to be able to come before our God and ask for forgiveness. Amen. Amen. And as the prodigal son went back home to his father, we should be able to do the same. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, continue reading verse 12. Oh, just please read 11 again. Just for emphasis please cast me not away from thy presence yes and take not thy holy spirit from me yes restore unto me these are some powerful verbs restore create hide purge these are some powerful verbs my kids are in school so we teaching them all those uh grammar terms and uh adjectives and verbs and these are very distinctive things that uh, we have to take hold of to encourage ourselves. Amen. Restore, family. Re. Store unto me. Come on, read. Restore unto me the yes. joy of thy salvation. Yes. And uphold me with thy free spirit. So God has his salvation, right? That's right. And uphold me with thy free spirit. We don't have to pay for it. Like that Pharisee thought he had to do. It's free, family. All we have to do is ask. Continue reading, fam. Then will I teach transgressors thy way. All right, now you got a job to do. After you've cleaned yourself up, you can go and speak to somebody else, right? right. Once you pluck the mold out of your own eye, you can go speak. His word. Come on, read. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Unto me? Unto thee. 
unto the Lord. Amen. So it's not about us. It's about Jesus, family. Lord. It's never been about us. It has to be about the Lord. If you listen to a ministry that don't talk about Jesus, you better run. All right. Continue reading, please. Deliver me from blood guiltiness. Yes. Oh, God. Mm. Thou God of my salvation. How many times are we going to read this word salvation? He's the God of my salvation. He's a savior. We talking about Jesus. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book is written a meal. Oh, God. Right. Mm. It's talking about Jesus family all through this book, all through the pages of this book. Continue reading. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Yes, Lord. O Lord. Yes. Open thou my lips. Mm. And my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Yes. We're going to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Let's go to Proverbs 28. So we're just talking about how God is merciful to a repentant, confessing sinner. Or a break of God's word and his law. Somebody who doesn't have faith, according to Romans 13. I mean, 14. All right. So I want Proverbs 28. Okay. Proverbs 28 and just one verse here. Verse 13, please. Verse 13. Yes. He that covereth his sins shall. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Take your time with this one. Okay. Take your time with this one. It's just one verse. We want them to feel this one. 13, please. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper so if you hide your sins you're not gonna prosper because the lord see everything right he knows what you're doing out there family but what do we have to do but whoso confesses uh-huh and forsaketh them so you have to do what confess these are two verbs right all right strong ones you have to confess you don't have to tell me you better tell the lord he to save you amen Go to God the Father. He said, confess it. And do what? Forsake it them. So you got to stop doing it. Forsake it. Come on, Reed. Shall have mercy. Shall have what? Mercy. That's what we're in this for. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Amen. So we have to remember mercy, family, from our God. Let's continue on now to the redemptive part of mercy. And how God did this from the beginning and how he foreshadowed it. Let's go to Exodus, the 25th chapter. Exodus, the 25th chapter. Because God had Moses set up a tabernacle for he, for Aaron and the priest to use. And he set up a priesthood that would be modeled in his image. Amen. Amen. So let's there's some elements in the priesthood in the in the tabernacle that we just wanted to take a look at. Some specific items. Not all of them. We want to keep your attention today. Just a couple of them that have to do with the message of mercy and Lord. Uh Exodus the twenty fifth chapter one through three and then verse eight. When you have it, please read for our family. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering. Mm -hmm. Of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offering. Amen. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them, gold and silver and brass. Wow. So the Lord wants the best. So he wants to give the best to you. Because they left it, they left Egypt. Where do you think they got all this from? They got it from Egypt, right? right? So they received the goodness of the Lord from Egypt. And all he's asking for is a little offering back, right? Mm -hmm. So he can build these components that would be a part of this tabernacle of the congregation, which is a, a tent, a big tent, a worship tent, is what I would like to call it. Skip down to verse 8, please. And let them make me a sanctuary. Yes, a sanctuary. That, that I may come on read. That I may dwell among them. He wants to dwell with us, family. It's a tabernacle of the congregation so the Lord can dwell with us, family. But what has to happen? Continue reading. 
according to all that I show thee, mm -hmm. after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. You have to make it according to how I tell you to, though. If you want me to dwell among you, do what I say. Continue reading verse 10. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Yes. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof. Yes. And a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. Mm -hmm. And a cubit and a half the height thereof. So our God is very specific. He's about dimensions. Well, that makes sense because our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, was a carpenter. So he, he's measuring everything out, telling Moses how to measure things out. Because again, Moses said that a prophet would be like unto him, right? He wants you to hear him talking about Jesus Christ, our Lord. Continue reading verse 11. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. So this thing is so decked out, it's made out of shittim wood, which is some nice wood, obviously. And he's got it overlaid with gold. Gold-plated wood. Think about that. Gold-plated wood. Verse 11. Within and without shall thou, within and without shall thou overlay it, mm -hmm. and thou shall make upon it a crown of gold round about. So again, the Ark of the Covenant had a crown of gold round about it, right? Sitting on the top of it was a crown of gold, right? Okay. Now let's skip down to verse sixteen. What are we to do with this Ark? What it was uh, Moses to do with the Ark of the Covenant? And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. And we talked about that earlier. That's going to be the Ten Commandments in the Ark of the Covenant. That makes sense, right? Because that's the, the covenant that God gave the children of Israel, right? Well, the whole world to keep, matter of fact, right? But let's read 17. What's, what's next? And thou shalt make a mercy seat. A what? Mercy seat. A mercy seat? What's the purpose of this mercy seat, I wonder? Can you read it again? Verse 17, please. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of, of what? Pure gold. Oh, no. You mean it, it's not made of wood? Pure gold. Pure gold, family. So it's not gold-plated wood. It's finer than that art. It's made out of pure gold. Think about it's the best that God had to had the children of Israel make pure gold family just like those streets of gold that we hope to walk on one day Amen. it's supposed to be transparent gold that we've never seen in our life praise the Lord Verse 17. Think about that. Verse 17. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Yes. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof. Yes. And a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold. Uh -huh. Of beaten work shall thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. Uh oh. So now we have two cherubims of gold as well. It's going to be at the ends of the mercy seat. Get my hands right. So. They're going to be leaning in looking like this. Keep reading, please. And make one cherub on the one end mm -hmm. and the other cherub on the other end. Yes. Even of the mercy seat shall you make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. Yes, ma'am. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings. Covering their mercy seat with their wings. So the wings are facing towards one another, covering the mercy seat. Come on, read. And their faces shall look one to another. Yeah. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubim speak. Yes. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon Say, the ark. What? The mercy seat is going that's made out of pure gold with the cherubim is going to be above the ark. Amen. The ark is there now, made out of wood, should have wooden. Overlaid with gold, gold plated wood, but you gotta have that mercy sitting on top Amen. that's made out of pure gold. But the cherubim hmm. above the ark. Read verse 21 put one more time again. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark. Mm. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. Yes. And there I will meet with thee. There will I meet with thee, right? Come on, read. And I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. From where? Above the mercy seat. 
So God is going to commune or talk with you above the mercy seat, family. It didn't say he was going to be in the box with the, the two tables of stone. We got to be specific because our God is specific now. You have to have mercy above the art because if it's not for mercy, we all deserve to die, family, because we all fall short. Can you reverse 22 again, please? And there will I meet with thee. Yes. And I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, mm -hmm. from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony mm -hmm. of all things, which I give thee in the commandment unto the children of Israel. Yes. So God is going to speak from between the two cherubims. Because in the garden of, of Eden, what protect the, 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 uh, the tree of life? Wasn't the cherubim? Right? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's move on to Numbers, the seventh chapter, please. We just want to make these points. And we're going to read uh, as the Lord will allow us to uh, get and give us strength to. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, number seven, verses one, and then we shall skip down to verse 80. None. When you have it, please read for our family. And it came to pass on the day that Moses had fully set up the tabernacle mm -hmm. and had anointed it mm -hmm. and sanctified it and all the instruments thereof, both the altar and all the vessels thereof, and had anointed them and sanctified them. So he anointed and sanctified everything, right? He fully set up the tabernacle and got it all done. What happened in verse 89? And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle. So Moses was allowed to go into this tabernacle. Right. That's how this flawed man was able to go into the tabernacle and do what? And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him. To speak with who? God. Come on, read. Then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat. From where? Off the mercy seat. Come on, Reed. That was upon the Ark of the Testimony. Because the mercy seat is upon the, the Ark of Testimony. Come on, Reed. From between the two cherubims. Yes, ma'am. And he spake unto them. Unto him. Praise the unto Lord. Unto him. Amen. So Moses didn't have the restrictions. As we're going to read Aaron and the other priests had. He was able to walk and talk with the Lord face to face. That's what he told uh, Miriam and Aaron. Right. When they uh, came up against Moses that one time and they learned a lesson and she became leprous as snow. Right. Let's go move on to Leviticus, the 16th chapter, please. We're going to touch on the Day of Atonement, but we're just going to hit some high points real quick. All right. We're going to let it speak for itself. We're in the law. But we want to grab and and see and foreshadow the mercy of the Lord in the law. Because as Paul said in Romans, the 15th chapter, the things written aforetime were written for our learning. That we might have comfort of the scriptures, might have hope, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, let's read verse two and then we shall skip the verse eight. When you have it, please read. And the Lord said unto Moses. Speak unto Aaron thy brother, mm -hmm. that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat. Oh, hold on now. Moses was able to go into the ark anytime. But his brother, who was the high priest, could not go at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat. Right? Continue reading. Which is upon the ark. Yes. That he died not. So the Lord was going to kill him if he did that. You can't just go any day behind the behind the uh within the veil before the mercy seat because the mercy seat was behind the veil. If this is the veil, that's the mercy seat in the Ark of the Covenant. All right. Uh can you read verse two again, please? And the Lord said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, mm -hmm. which is upon the ark, mm -hmm. that he died not. Yes. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. He, the Lord's consistent. He doesn't change, right? He's the same yesterday and, for, the day and forever. Skip down to verse 8, please. 
verse 8. Yes. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, mm -hmm. one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. Mm -hmm. On the Day of Atonement, you're going to hear different messages on this uh, very matter. But we just want to hit the high points. Uh, continuing, please. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell mm -hmm. and offer him for a sin offering. So one goat was for a sin offering and the other one was going to be for the atonement, right? right. But we're going to stay, we're going to stay, keep our minds focused on the sin offering goat at this time. Let's move on now and skip down to verse 15, please. Did you read nine? I did. Okay, let's skip down to verse 15, please. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering. Talk about Aaron. That is for the people. Mm -hmm. And bring his blood within the veil. And do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock. Mm -hmm. And sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. He's going to do what? Sprinkle it. He's going to sprinkle the, the blood upon and before, which is on the veil, the mercy seat. Did it tell us how many times? Can you read that again? Then shall he kill the goat mm -hmm. of the sin offering yes. that is for the people. That is for the people. So you got a sin offering who died for the people. I just want you to visualize what's going on here, family. Mm -hmm. If you know the story, just follow along. Continue reading. And bring his blood within the veil. Yes. And do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock. Yes. And sprinkle it upon the mercy seat. And before the mercy seat. So the blood of the sin offering has to go before the mercy seat and be sprinkled on the mercy seat, family. That's where the blood goes. It doesn't go on the Ark of the Covenant because if he does that, he's going to die. He has to do it according to the commandment. Amen. The blood is with mercy. Praise the Lord. You understand? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So. Continuing, please. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place. Yes. Because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel. Yeah. And so, so you mean uncleanness of who? The children of Israel. So Israel didn't have it made, walking in the shade with a little glass of lemonade. <laughs> because we got uncleanness on us, family. We got to walk in the mercy and cover it by the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because we get like the Pharisees family where we think we got it. That we don't need the mercy of the Lord even because we walking in God's commandments. So we think like that Pharisee. 16 again, please. And he shall make an atonement for the holy. Uh, no, what? Atonement. We're going to define de redemption shortly and we're going to uh, define atonement shortly. Continue reading. Because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel, yes. and because of their transgressions and all and in all their sins, you mean God's gonna look look over their transgressions? Praise the Lord! Yeah. It's by His mercies we read that first in Lamentation that we are not consumed by His mercies, family. Come on, read, sister. And so shall He do for the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. That remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. In the midst of their uncleanness, God forgive you, family. Skip down to verse 29, please. 29. Yes, ma'am. And this shall be a statute forever unto you, mm -hmm. that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month. And this is the day of atonement, according to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. The day of atonement. What's supposed to happen? You shall afflict your souls. Oh, fast. Come on, read. And do no work at all. Mm hmm whether it be one of your own country mm -hmm. or a stranger that sojourneth among you. So this is not only for Israel, this is for everyone. The, str so tr the str stranger that sojourneth among you is anyone mm -hmm. who wants to dwell among you. So you have to accept them as your brother. I know Paul did that for Titus, didn't he? He did, Amen. He did that for Timothy because his father was a Greek. And Galatians say that Titus was a Greek. Paul accepted them as his dear sons, family. That's family. We are family. There's no difference. Mm -hmm. The gospel that I preach should be the same gospel that you preach. It doesn't matter what color you are, family. If you're dealing with the mercy of the Lord, we're supposed to understand this. Continue reading, please. 
verse 30. Verse 30. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you yes. to cleanse you, yeah. that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Do we need to interpret that, or is that clear? It's clear. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, family. But where was that blood given at? On the mercy seat. Praise the Lord. The blood goes with the mercy seat. Now let's go to Hebrews. Let's go to the New Testament to get more understanding of this. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, please. I'm slowing my wife down. I'm sorry. With all this talking I'm doing, but I, I just want to make sure that we're clear on this. I'm passionate about it. I apologize, Brother Colleen, but. I'm, I'm passionate about this. Mercy of the Lord, because I wouldn't be here without it. Amen. I'm renewed every morning. We, I wouldn't be here, and my wife wouldn't be here standing before you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verses uh, 1 through 9, 1 through 8. Paul gives us a summary of the tabernacle. Uh, when you have it, please read. 1 through 8, please. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service. That we read about and specific a, ordinances or laws and what? And a worldly sanctuary. Yes, it was. It was something that was temporal. Because where is it now? Where is that tabernacle? Where is that Ark of the Covenant? And where is the mercy seat? Can we find it? If we're so holy, we need to have those instruments right now, and we need to be dealing with those things, right? But we don't have them, as Paul is about to tell us. He didn't even have them in his day. Let's read it, please. For there was a tabernacle. Made. Was means past tense, doesn't it? Right. There was a tabernacle made. Come on, read. The first. Yes. Wherein was the candlestick. Yep. And the table and the showbread which is called the sanctuary. And we read about that in Numbers, right? Right. And um, Exodus 25, verse 3. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, yes, which had the golden censer and mm -hmm. the Ark of the Covenant. Now, we talked, we touched on the Ark of the Covenant, right? Mm -hmm. Overlaid, right? Come on, read. Overlaid, round about with gold. So it was a wood box that was gold. It was shittim wood that was gold-plated. We understand that, right? We read that. Continue reading. We are in was the golden pot yes. that had manna. Yes. And Aaron's rod that budded mm -hmm. and the tables of the covenant. Yes. Talk and, about the Ten Commandments. Come on, read. Verse 5. And over it, the cherubims of glory. Say what? The cherubims. It said, over it right. is the cherubims of glory. Come on, read. Shadowing the mercy seat. Yeah. So, again, mercy. Paul is confirming that mercy. The mercy seat was over the Ark of the Covenant. Maureen. Of which we can cannot now speak particularly. We can't speak of these things particularly now. Because again, they were gone. Right? Right. Continue reading, my sister. Now, when these things were thus ordained, mm -hmm. the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. Yes, they did. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year. On the Day of Atonement. Not without blood, right. which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Yes. The Holy Where did he offer it at? On the mercy seat, according to the law. Paul didn't tell us that detail, that small detail that it was done on the mercy seat. We had to go to the law to read that. Verse 8, please. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Can you read that slowly? Verse 8, please. The Holy Ghost, this signifying. The Holy Ghost, this signifying. That the what? That the way into the holiest that of the all. That the way, the way, way into the holiest of all, Maurice. Was not yet made manifest. Mm -hmm. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Yes. Now, let's figure out. What is that the way? 
that the Holy Ghost was signifying. Let's go to John the 14th chapter. Or you spot in Hebrews. John the 14th chapter. And let's let the Messiah or the Master tell us. It's himself. John 14 and verse 6, please. And you have it. Just one verse. Can you take your time with it? Very slow. Okay. I appreciate you, sister. Verse 6. Jesus saith unto him. Jesus saith unto him. Come on, read. I am the way. I am what? The way. Jesus is the way, family. Yeah. Jesus is the way. It's not about us. Whatever you call yourself, it ain't about you. It's about Jesus. Amen. Doesn't matter what your nationality is. It's about Jesus. If you're not teaching Jesus, then please run from that ministry. Right? Because Jesus is the way. He said, I am the way. Come on, Reed, the please. Truth yes, ma'am. And the life. And the life. Come on, read. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No man cometh to the Father who is holy. Because Jesus himself says, I'm not good. But the Father is good. Right? Because he was in that flesh. But the Father had never seen flesh. Never been in the flesh. Right? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But you got to go through Jesus, family, to get to the Father. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus to the Father. Praise the Lord. Is that right? Now let's go back to Hebrews 9 and, and uh, get some more understanding of this. Hebrews 9, 11 through 12, and then we shall skip to 15. When you have it, please read for our family. But Christ being come. In but who? Christ. Yes. Being come in high priest of good things to come. Yes. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Oh, no. So we have a greater and per more perfect tabernacle now. Come on, read, sister. Not made with hands. Yes. That is to say, not of this building. Mm -hmm. Neither by the blood of goats and calves. That's right. But by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. So he didn't have to go every year to die. Once into the holy place. In heaven, right? Right. Come on, read. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. Eternal redemption for us, family. Amen. That's the mercy of the Lord that we have to remember. If not daily, weekly. You got to remember the Lord yeah. when we're trying to keep the Sabbath holy. You better remember the Lord. All right. Uh, verse 12, please. Can you read that one more time? Mm -hmm. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, mm -hmm. but by his own blood, he entered in. By his own blood. Come on, read. He entered in once mm -hmm. into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. Skip down to verse 15, please. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. He is the mediator of the New Testament, right? Because the, under the Old Covenant, it was under the blood of bulls and goats, right? Right. Continue reading. That by means of death, mm -hmm. for the redemption of the transgression. There's that key word again. Circle it, highlight it. We just read it twice already. We obtain eternal redemption in verse 12 for us. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now we're reading for the redemption of the transgressions. Come on, read. That were under the first testament. Yes. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Yes. Eternal inheritance is what we're in this for. Amen. Right? Skip down to verse 24, please, and read it. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. No, he did not. Which are the figures of the truth. So it. The tabernacle was a figure of the true family. So that mercy seat sitting on that Ark of the Covenant and God speaking from the mercy seat from between the cherubims represent the Lord family that you have to go through. So that blood being sprinkled on the mercy seat alone and the veil represent Christ. Amen. 
Jesus Christ, family, which our salvation comes through. Because John 4 says that salvation is of the Jews. Talking about Christ, not about you. It's talking about Jesus Amen. coming from the tribe of the, 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 he's the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? Amen. Verse 24, please. For Christ has not entered into the holy places yes. made with hands, mm -hmm. which are the figures of the truth, yes. but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Yes. So just like Moses went anytime into the tabernacle of the congregation, the Lord is in heaven, standing before the Father Amen. for us as high priest family. All right? Mm -hmm. Let's see now. About this, uh, the 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 definition of redemption. Super producer, would you please put that definition of redemption up? As as uh, super producer uh, starts to put that up, uh, that definition up. Let's go to Isaiah fifty three. We can come back there. So, uh oh, oh, there it is. All right, let's go to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, and we're just going to read um, four through six, and we can come back to the definition of super producer. Four through six, when you have it, there it is. Praise the Lord. The definition of redemption is the act of atoning for a fault or a mistake. And Lord knows we not made mistakes in our fault and guilty, right? The second definition from dictionary.com is deliverance or rescue. That's what redemption means. Yeah. And it says the act of atoning, right? Let's look up atonement. The definition of atonement means number one from dictionary.com is the satisfaction or reparation for a wrong. So God has to receive some atonement, some satisfaction or reparation for our wrong that we've done. Right? But he also redeems us or has done eternal redemption for our fault or our mistake. It's important that we recognize the mercy of the Lord. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 53 right now. Isaiah 53. Thanks for those definitions, my brother. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 6. When you have it, sister, please read. And this is talking about our Messiah that we are to remember his mercy upon us and the Father. Please pick it up at verse four. Surely he hath borne our griefs yes. and carried our sorrows. Yes. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Who was he smitten by? Smitten of God. Smitten of God and afflicted. Continue reading. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Yes. He was bruised for our iniquity. So he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Come on, read. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Yes. And with his stripes, we are healed. So by his stripes, please underline, circle, highlight whatever you must do to remember this. But with his stripes, we are healed, family. Yeah. Didn't we read that in the mercies of God? Chapter Psalm 103. That he healed us from all our diseases. Amen. Praise the Lord. Including this disease of sin, it said, "All oh, right, oh. that's a disease that was cast upon us by Adam." Verse six, please. All we like sheep have gone astray. Yes, we. It said, "All oh, right." Oh. So we've all fallen short, family. We're not perfect. We're working towards it, but we're not perfect. Continue reading. We have turned everyone to his own way. Yes. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. The Lord talked about the Father hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. It said all of us, right? Right. Oh. Rich, poor, bond free. 
the iniquity of us all. Right? Amen. Let's move on out of Mark, the 15th chapter. Let's look at Mark's perspective on the death of Christ. It's important that we deal with this family. So we don't have to wait for atonement and Passover to deal with the, these topics. It's important that we remember it all the time. All right. Mark 15, we're going to read 1 through 6, and we're going to skip to 15. When you have it, please read. And straightway in the morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus. Oh, you mean that this is Israel? The chief priest and the elders and the scribes and the whole council, that's Israel. What did they do to the Lord? They bound him. They tied him up. Put some chains on him, whatever they did, and did what to him? And carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. They gave him the Pilate, family. They the one, Israel is the one who turned on Israel. When you when you get down to the, the nitty gritty, because Jesus is the king of the Jews, right? Right. As we were about to read, continue reading. And Pilate asked him, mm -hmm. Art thou the king of the Jews? Yes. And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. Thou sayest it. Come on, read. And the chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. Yes. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold how many things they witnessed against thee. Mm -hmm. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Mm -hmm. Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. Whomsoever who desired? They desired, right? right? So to appease the people, on one day, talking about the Passover, he would release to them a prisoner. And this just happened to be Barabbas. But we're going to skip for time's sake. Skip down to verse 15, please. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them yes. and delivered Jesus when he had scour scourged him. To be scourged him? To be you know what that means, family? Wept. Remember Isaiah 53 said, by his stripes we are healed. You know what happens when somebody whip you? Stripes happen. Bloody stripes. For those who have seen Roots, what happened to Kunta Kente? They ripped his flesh off of him up against that tree. Scourge them mean to be whipped. All right? Can you read verse 15 again, please? And so Pilate, willing yes. to content the people, released Barabbas mm -hmm. unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. So then he was to be crucified. Continue reading. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. Very good. And they called together the whole band. All right. So they called together the whole band of soldiers. Continue reading. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head. Mm -hmm. Oh, a what? Crown of thorns. You remember that? The crown? Crown thee with tender mercies? Yes. That's Psalms 103 again, family. I told you to underline it. I told you to highlight it. Because this is what we are to strive to uh, release unto you uh, uh, when we come before you. The mercies and the goodness of the Lord. All right? Yeah. That's the most important thing. Because we wouldn't be before you if we didn't have that. Continue reading, my sister. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and yeah. put it about his head. Yes. And began to salute him. Hail, king of the Jews. Yes. And they smote him. So on they hit him, smote his head. Come on, read. Smote him on the head with a reed mm -hmm. and did spit upon they him. They spit again. These are strong verbs that I want you to feel as she reads this word of God to you. Continue reading, verse, sister, verse 19. And bowing their knees, worshipped him. They worshipped him, mocking him. Come on, read. And when they had mocked him, mm -hmm. they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him yes. and led him out to crucify him. Yes, ma'am. Verse 21. And they compelled one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. Skip down to verse 24, please. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. 
Mm-hmm. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. So they hung him on the cross, family. That old rugged cross, like those old songs used to say. On a tree, other verses tell you. Continue reading, my sister. And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. So they, again, in their mocking manner, the superscription said, king of the Jews. Please skip to verse 33. So this was in the morning time. Skip down to verse 33, though. And when the sixth hour was come, mm -hmm. there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth so hour. So this is daytime, but it turned to dark until the ninth hour, right? Continue reading. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Beautiful. Which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because again, when we read Isaiah 53, it said, he laid, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. So at this point in time, with this flesh on him, he felt like he was forsaken by the Father. Because he's bearing our sins and bearing all of our iniquities, fam. Right? Skip down to verse 37, please. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and mm -hmm. gave up the ghost. I mean, he died. And what happened? And the veil of the temple of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Wow. You mean these self-righteous Hebrews still had the veil in the temple that Herod made for them? Who didn't even look like them? It was Herod's temple. But they found a way to he didn't know the scripture. So what you think that temple looked like? It didn't look like Solomon's temple. He didn't know no scriptures. But these Hebrews were so self-righteous that they threw a veil in there. And guess what the father did? Rent that veil. Because again, it signified that there would be no more sacrifice for the sin. Because this was the ultimate sacrifice, family. Amen. 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 Continue reading at verse 39. And when the centurion was... Uh-oh. A centurion? You think he's Israel? Or one of those soldiers that we read about earlier that was mocking? Verse 39. And when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out and mm -hmm. gave up the ghost, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Was the son of God. So he became a believer, right? Right on the spot. After all that mock and beating that they gave him and killing that they did to the Lord, they, this centurion, the only one, stood before them and said that this is the Son of God. Now, let's move on to 1 Peter, the second chapter. We're winding it down, family. Spare with us for a little longer. 1 Peter 2, 21 through 24, please. 1 Peter 2, 21 through 24. When you have it, my sister, please read for our family. For even hereunto were ye called. You were what? Called. We are called, family. But how many of us are chosen? Continue reading. Because Christ also suffered for us. Did what? Suffered for us. He suffered for us. This is consistent. This is the mercy of the Lord that we ought to remember. Continue reading, my sister. Leaving us an example yes. that you should follow his steps. Yes. Who did no sin, mm -hmm. neither was guile found in his mouth. And guile is deceit. So deceit wasn't found in his mouth. Unlike those Pharisees who were hypocr hypocrites, according to the scriptures, because that was the leaven that they had. Hypocrisy that Jesus warned us about. And their false doctrine. But I thought they had the word of God. They were Pharisees. Pharisee Israelites. Who supposedly had the word of God. Didn't that um, Pharisee that we read about in Luke 18. Said he fast twice a week. And gave tithes of all. Oh he was righteous. In his own eyes. And Jesus called him out as self-righteous. And despising others. Like you got it, mate. You in the same boat then. 
But you think you got it made. If you don't rely on the goodness of the Lord and his mercy. Let's continue reading. Verse 23. Who, when he was reviled, yes. reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. Yes. But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Talking about the Father. Come on, read. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Yes, he did. That we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. By whose stripes ye were healed. So, by whose what? Stripes ye were healed. His wounds or that whipping that he took, that's how we got healed. Because it said being dead to sins, right? He took it away. Just like he did the children of Israel. On the, that priest did on the uh, sprinkling before the mercy seat, removing their iniquities, right? That got done by the sin offering. That goat, right? Verse, uh, we, we shall move on. Let's move on out of Romans 5. Very popular verse. Romans 5, we're going to read verses 8 through 11. Just a few verses here, and then we're going to move on. Romans, the fifth chapter, 8 and 11. When you have it. Or did I switch that? Uh, I'm so happy. Let's do Acts first. Acts 10 first. Acts 10 first. Can we switch that, Super Producer? If it's too difficult, I can read the Romans first. Let's keep the flow. You got it there? Let's read it. Romans 5, 8 through 11. When you have it, please read for our family. But God commended his love toward us. Yes. In that while we were yet sinners. So God's love toward us, because when you go to the famous John three sixteen, what does it say? God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. Right? This is saying it, but from Paul's perspective, verse 8. Can you read that again? But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, yes. Christ died for us. Yes. Verse 9, please. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So that blood is what justifies us. That mercy, that blood that goes before mercy, that's sprinkled upon the mercy seat, right? Jesus was all of that. The mercy seat, the priest, the blood, Jesus paid it all, as those old songs used to say. Amen. Verse 9, please. For if, when we were enemies, mm -hmm. we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. We're reconciled or brought closer to God by the death of his son. This is the mercy of the Lord. Continue reading. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. We shall be saved by his life. Yes, ma'am. Continue reading verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Yes, we received the atonement by our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's what we've been looking for, right? Let's move on now to Acts the 10th chapter. Acts 10 we're going to read verse, pick it up at verse 34, because on this special day when uh, Cornelius, who was a Gentile, asked Peter uh, to come and speak before him and his family, his near kinsmen and friends. Let's see what Peter had to say. Praise the Lord. Let's pick it up at verse 34. When you have it, please read. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter. Say what? How many times are we going to read this? So God is no respect of persons. Peter had to realize this because Peter had a race problem. So Jesus had to deliver uh, a sheet of four-footed beasts and tell Peter, Peter to rise, Peter kill and eat. And go through all of these changes so he can realize that, okay, I shouldn't call people 
uh, common or unclean that don't look like me. Right? right? He said, I perceive of a truth. I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Continue reading verse 35. But in every nation, he that feareth him. It said every or, some, or just Israel? Every. But in every nation, come on, read. He that feareth him yes. and worketh righteousness mm -hmm. is accepted with him. If you work righteous, you practice righteousness. Come on, read. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. preaching peace by Jesus Christ. Peace by who? Jesus Christ. Come on, read. He is Lord of all. Mm -hmm. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea mm -hmm. and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Yes. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with the power. With what? With power. Come on, read. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That's the benefits package of serving the Lord. It said you get healed of all that were oppressed of the devil. Come on, read. For God was with him. Yes, he was. Come on, read. And we are witnesses of all things mm -hmm. which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, yes, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. How many times are we gonna read this, family? That this is how we get the mercy of the Lord by believing the gospel. Come on, read. Him God raised up the third day and mm -hmm. showed him openly. Yes, because again, by we are saved by his life. Because if God didn't raise him from the dead, we would still be in our sins, right? So we depend on the resurrection of the Lord as well. But that's for another day. Continue reading. Not to all the people, mm -hmm. but unto witnesses chosen before of God. Yes. Even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. That's right. And he commanded us to preach unto the people. Yes. And to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. Yes, he was ordained to do it, right? And we're going to touch on this a little in a, in a second, right? Since God rose from the dead, he ordained him. He was ordained of God the Father to be judge of the quick and the dead. Come on, read verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness mm -hmm. that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Did it say just Israel or whosoever? Whosoever. This is the gospel, family. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endure for ever the Lord. let's move now so that's the redemption the redemptive mercy of the lord right our god we showed it through the mercy seat we showed it through jesus christ right foreshadowing god's mercy let's move now to luke the 23rd chapter please Luke 23. I just love the Lord and how how he he just doesn't forget you. you no. Know? Like I said, we're just touching back on how the mercy of Jesus and how he can be to a repentant sinner. I just wanted to circle back around that uh, that premise. Let's pick it up at verse 32. Luke 23 and 32. 32 through 34, and then we'll skip down to verse 39. When you have it, please read my sister. And there were also two others, male factors, led with him to be put to death. All right, so this is Jesus about to be uh, put to death on the cross with two male factors, right? There are two criminals lawbreakers as an israelite or israel calls people right criminal meaning they did something wrong wasn't that a part of one of our definitions an offender someone who's an enemy right but what happens continue reading please when they were come to the place which is called calvary Mm -hmm. There they crucified him. Yes. And the male factors. So the criminals or the male factors got crucified too. What happened? One on the right hand and mm -hmm. the other on the left. All right. So you got three trees or crosses that Jesus is in the middle of. And then you have the two uh, male factors or criminals on, on either side of him. Continue reading verse 
34, please. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Excuse me? You got me hanging on a cross. This is the Lord, though. In his mercy. He says, forgive them, the people who are doing him wrong. For they know not what they do. They don't even know who they deal with right now. Forgive them, Father. This is mercy. And what do they do? Middle of 34. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. So he took his raiment and cast lots. Skip down to 39, please. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Wow. He said, the key word here is if. Meaning, I don't know if I believe or not, believe you or not. He said, if you are the Christ, save us, save thyself and us. Not only if you're the Christ, should you deliver yourself, you're the anointed one. You've been doing all, this, all these uh, miracles all this time. You should be able to deliver yourself and us. Get us out of here, man. What they were saying, continuing verse 40. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Yes. Doest thou, doest not thou fear God? Fear who? God. Who's he talking about? Maybe he recognized who Jesus was. First, continue reading. Seeing thou, seeing thou art in the same condemnation. Mm -hmm. And we indeed justly. For we receive the due reward of our deeds. Mm -hmm. But this man have done nothing amiss. Yes. So he recognized that this man was innocent. Right? Mm -hmm. We did the bad that we did. And we deserve the death that we're getting. Continue reading. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Do what? Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. So what is he asking? For mercy. He's asking for that definition that we put up earlier, compassionate forbearance or forgiveness toward an offender or enemy. He's asking for that mercy. And what did Jesus say? Verse 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Yes. I'm acknowledging you today, family, that if you look to the mercy of the Lord, you shall be with the Lord in paradise as well. Yeah. Today, I'm telling you that you shall be with him in paradise. If you humble yourself, he's going to exalt you in due time, like that publican yeah. who was on his knees, smiting his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me. All right, three more places. Luke 17, and then we'll, we'll let you continue to enjoy your Sabbath, please. Please continue to enjoy your Sabbath. Thank you for uh, making a, pit, a weekly pit stop here on the Gospel of the Word broadcast, and we've been enjoying this, but we are winding it down, family. Uh, Luke 17. 11 through 19. I just want to make a point here about mercy. Luke 17, 11 through 19. When you have it, please read. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. All right. So the Samaritans are in Israel. Let's take note of that. Galilee is a city of Israel. Take note of that. I'll continue reading verse 12. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. That were what? Lepers. Lepers. Supposedly unclean, right? And what happens? Which stood afar off. Mm -hmm. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Isn't that what the male factor more or less said to Jesus? Have mercy on me. Remember me. I'm the one who believe in you, Lord. 
Remember me when you come as in your kingdom. They just asking for a little mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. It said 10 lepers, right? Right. And what happened? Verse 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show, go show your show yourselves unto the priests. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. This is the mercy of the Lord for him. He just told them to be obedient, do what the law says, go show yourself to the priest, and their faith healed him. And we're going to see that. Continue reading. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Now, let's take note of what he did. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice, did what? Glorified God. So he looked at Jesus and glorified God. He recognized him as God. Amen. And did what? And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Excuse me? A Samaritan? You mean like John 4, the woman at the well? A Samaritan? A stranger? He recognized the Lord and fell down at his feet and worship, recognizing him as God. He was a believer. Amen. Pay attention to what you're reading, family. Be diligent with your reading of the scriptures. Continue reading, says. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But mm -hmm. where are the nine? So where are the nine? Come on, read. They are not found that return to give glory to God. So he, he's saying I'm God. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know. They didn't return to give glory to God. Come on, Reed. Save this stranger. Save you, this stranger. He's recognizing him, at the Samaritan, as a non-Israelite. A stranger. What happened, verse 19? And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith have made thee whole. So you try to tell me a Samaritan had faith in the Lord? Yes. When you read all of John 4 in its fullness and entirety, you will see that he wasn't the only Samaritan who had faith in the Lord, who, were, who was a stranger, supposedly a stranger. But read Ephesians 2 and see if they're strangers anymore. They are fellow citizens Amen. with the household of God. In the commonwealth of Israel. Last last two places. Matthew 25. Amen. Amen. Praise you the Lord. For he is good. And his mercy endure forever. Matthew 25. 31 through 35 please. And then skip down to 41. When you have it. And again. This is Jesus. We read that he's going to be the judge of the quick and the dead. Didn't we read that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you pick it up? 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory mm -hmm. and all the holy angels with him, yes. then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Yes. And before him shall be gathered all nations. Mm -hmm. And he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goat. Yes. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Mm hmm. Then shall the king say unto them on the on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Yes. For I, for I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. Mm. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. I what? I was a stranger, and ye took me in. I was hungry, I was thirsty, and I was a stranger, and you took me in. We're not going to read the rest of it right now. Read it on your own. But the point of the matter is, is he said, come ye inherit the um, kingdom of my father, right? Right. Because I was hungry. Let's see what he means. Skip down to verse 41, please. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. Yes. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared mm. for the devil and his angels. Yes. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. Mm. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. Mm. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Mm. So you, if you got that mentality of despising others, 
What is Jesus saying? He's the judge. I was hungry. You gave me no meat. I was thirsty. You gave me no drink. I was a stranger. You took me not in. Continue reading. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Yes. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Mm. So it was all about you. Not about Jesus. Praise ye the Lord. It wasn't about Jesus in your ministry, in your service. It was about you. Continue reading. Then shall they also answer him, saying, mm -hmm. Lord, when saw we thee? Oh, they said, Lord? They didn't say, oh, man, we don't believe in you. They called him Lord. Man. They recognized him as God then, at least. Continue reading. Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? So these people did not have mercy on those who had need. Right? right. What happens? Verse 45. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. If you didn't do it to the least, you didn't serve the Lord. Praise you the Lord. Verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So God is merciful to the merciful. We're not going to read that today. Blessed is the merciful because they, they shall see, receive mercy. You want mercy? Be merciful. Last place. The book of Habakkuk. Amen. And thank you, Gospel of the Word broadcast, for having me and my, my beautiful wife and sister in Christ. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves Amen. with with the fellowship and the Lord. We just want to praise and thank you for the wonderful work you are doing Amen. in the gospel. And uh, as we close out in this last verse. Say Habakkuk. All right, Habakkuk three. It's before Zephaniah and after Nahum. So you got Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. Chapter three, last place. We're going to read three through six, and then skip to ten. When you have it, please read. God came from Taman yes. and the Holy One from Mount Paran, yes. Paran, Selah. Mm -hmm. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Yes. And his brightness was as the light. Mm -hmm. He had horns coming out of his hand mm -hmm. and there was the hiding of his power. So this is a little prophecy about the end time, his second coming actually, as we're going to read. Continue reading. Before him went the pestilence. Before him went what? The pestilence. You mean disease went before the Lord? Right. Come on, read. And burning coals went forth at his feet. Yes. He stood and measured the earth. Oh, there's that measurement again. He's a carpenter. Of course. He stood and measured what? The earth. Measured the earth. Yes. He beheld mm -hmm. and drove asunder the nations. Yes, he did. And the everlasting mountains were scattered. Yes. The perpetual hills did bow. They did bow. The hills going to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Finish it out. His ways are everlasting. Yes, ma'am. His ways are everlasting. Skip down to verse 10, please. The mountain saw thee. Yes. And they trembled. Yes, they did. The overflowing of the water passed by. Mm -hmm. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. So again, what they call nature is going to recognize and bow themselves unto the Lord and worship him because he's the creator of all things. You want to know who the creator of all things is Jesus again. Yeah. Ephesians 3 and 9 tells you that. Check it out. Continue reading, my sister. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. Oh, you mean the sun and moon moved? Because again, God got everything moving around him. It stood still in their habitation and did what? At the light of thine arrows they went, mm -hmm. and at the shining of thy glittering spear. Yeah. 
Thou didst march through the land in indignation. So God is mad? Yes, ma'am. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. He's threshing the heathen in anger. But I thought our God was merciful. Why is he angry? Continue reading. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, mm. even for salvation with thine anointed. Yes. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. The ones we read about in Matthew 25? Yes, ma'am. That's the people of the Lord. Amen. Those who are going to take care of those who are less fortunate. Who are merciful. Right? That's where the salvation is going to come to. Not the self-righteous. Who depend on the mercy of the Lord. Continue reading. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. Yes. By discovering the foundation unto the neck. Selah. Yeah. Selah. Now skip back up to verse 1. Let's see who's talking and what he's begging for. Verse 1. The prayer of Abaka, the prophet, upon Shigona. Very good. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and mm. was afraid. So, the word of the Lord comes to the prophet, right? He gets afraid. He speaks it. We read what he spoke, right? In verses 3 through about 13. He's afraid. Let's see what he says. O Lord. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. Mm -hmm. In the midst of the years, make known. Yes. In wrath, remember mercy. In wrath, remember mercy. Amen. Because our God is merciful unto thousands. Amen. Especially those that fear him. And with that being said, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good things, all those good things to the Gospel of the Word broadcast. Amen. And we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. And with that being said, we have Why Am I Thus Bible Insights with the House of Light Ministries. Shout out to the church. Praise the Lord. We have live broadcasts every second and fourth Thursday of each month. That is the Wednesday night. That was the Thursday night Bible study. Praise the Lord. Every second and third uh, Thursday. And then also, we want to shout out the Wake Up Show with Brother Aza K. Fingers. Shout out to his ministry that occurs on the Sabbath, uh, Eastern Standard Time at 10 o'clock, where I'm at on the Eastern Coast. Amen. Thank you, Brother Colleen, for those uh, shouting out those ministries. And uh, we pray that you enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. And we are out. Amen. Thank you, brother.